Anzio, a small Italian fishing and tourist town on the Tyrrhenian Sea, famous for its Roman ruins and the birthplace of the emperors Nero and Caligula, would assume historical importance during World War II. In 1943, a plan had evolved for the British and Americans to help relieve some of the pressure felt by the Soviet Union. Stalin was anxious that the Western Allies opened the Second Front somewhere, but the only viable location at that time was in Italy. Allied operations across the Mediterranean following the defeat of Axis forces in North Africa meant that Hitler had to leave substantial forces in southern France, Italy and the Balkans to guard his southern flank preventing their deployment on the Eastern Front, and therefore limiting his strategy there. By late 1943, the British and American campaign in Italy had become bogged down. The mountainous country favouring the Axis defenders, and the Germans moving from one heavily defended line across the peninsula to another. In Italy, mules were more useful than motor vehicles in the rugged landscape, the many fast-flowing rivers posed serious impediments on the Allied advance north, the Germans blowing the bridges as they went, coupled with extreme weather conditions such as torrential rains and thick mud in the autumn and deep snow in the winter. The campaign in Italy was some of the toughest fighting of the European campaign. However, the way to break this stalemate was to launch a surprise landing in the Germans' rear, and that place was at Anzio. 25 kilometers south of Rome. A stalemate had developed south of the town of Cassino on the Gustav Line, the fight for its famous mountaintop abbey taking months. Cassino led to the Anzio operation. Advance from Anzio, link up with Allied troops coming north from Cassino and march on Rome. The build-up of forces for the operation took place at Naples in early 1944. The problems were numerous, and many in the Allied camp thought the operation entirely too risky. Compared to the D-Day invasion in Normandy five months later, the Anzio operation was starved of vital equipment and shipping. Only two infantry divisions could be landed in the initial wave, followed by two more. By the 21st of January 1944, the task force was moving towards Anzio. The two divisions making the initial assault were both veterans, the British 1st Infantry Division and the U.S. 3rd Infantry Division. In overall command was U.S. Lieutenant General Mark Clark. Incredibly, when the landings commenced on the 22nd of January, there was initially no resistance. Why? Because, in concert with the landings, the Allies had launched a fresh offensive at Casino, which led the Germans to move much of their forces south to strengthen the Gustav Line. The Luftwaffe tried to harass the landings at Anzio using Stukas and other bombers, but the Germans didn't have sufficient aircraft in Italy to pose a serious threat. Only fragmentary German units could initially oppose the landings. Field Marshal Albert Kesselring, the German commander-in-chief Italy, had a stellar reputation, and he moved very fast to contain the Anzio beachhead. He put General von Mackensen in charge of eliminating the beachhead. Within 24 hours of the landings, Mackensen had pieces of eight German divisions in position. At dawn on the 25th of January, the Anglo-Americans began to push out from the beachhead. German resistance was both ferocious and unmovable. Over three days of heavy combat, the beachhead was slightly expanded, but at very high cost. By now, the Allies had four infantry divisions ashore. By the end of January, the Allies had suffered 3,000 casualties. The offensive was halted. The Anzio beachhead now prepared for a siege. But how long till Mackensen counterattacked? More German divisions and aircraft were moved down from northern Italy, from southern France and the Balkans. By mid-February 1944, in the centre, the beachhead had been pushed back by the Germans. A further Allied offensive south to breach the Gustav Line failed. Anzio was now on its own. Huge German assaults commenced, met by ferocious Allied artillery fire, including from ships offshore.
Allied bombers also pounded the Germans, breaking up the German assaults. A new overall commander at Anzio, U.S. Major General Lucien Truscott, was appointed. What followed was a three-month-long period of static warfare. Everywhere was in range of German guns, a situation not dissimilar to the British position at Gallipoli in World War I, when the beachhead there was contained by the Turks. Both sides entered artillery duels. The Germans even brought up two massive railway guns, codenamed Roland and Leopold. These were used to bombard the Anzio beachhead, the Allies collectively nicknaming the guns Anzio Annie. Constant patrol activity and raiding took place all round the perimeter. The positions on both sides resembled the trenches of World War I. The German Navy also intervened, launching human torpedo attacks on Allied shipping off Anzio in a desperate attempt to prevent the Allies from landing more men for a breakout attempt. But many more reinforcements were sent into Anzio, preparatory to a new offensive. A fresh push was launched in the south against the Gustav Line. It took a week of heavy combat, but this time the southern forces began to break through the line. Now was the moment. On the 23rd of May 1944, the breakout at Anzio began. Soon the US and British forces were on the road to Rome. Rome was reached on the 4th of June 1944, having been declared an open city by the retreating Germans. However, General Clark's decision to go for the Italian capital ensured that a very sizable German force escaped to fight again. This would ensure that the war in Italy would drag on for another year. The Allied victory at Rome was quickly overshadowed by the D-Day landings, which occurred two days later on the 6th of June 1944. However, the name of Anzio was burned into the collective memory of the British and American people. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.